It's Foos Talk Live. Are you talking to me? Compelling and lively banter. Are you going to talk to us? Talking foosball. Foosball was how I measured my value as a man. You took that away. Players and fans, promoters and pros. Unedited and raw. Talk, talk, talk. Living in the moment. We have a lot of important things to talk about. All while practicing social distancing. Cool. We'll talk. No big whoop. Let's get this thing started. Foos Talk Live. Happy holidays from the Foos Talk Live team. I'm Tom Robinson. The team is taking a break from the live show for the holidays this weekend. Now, you might be expecting another year-end retrospective. Instead, we decided to tear down the fourth wall. Yes, give you an exclusive listen to what happens before and after each show. In other words, you get to eavesdrop on us. What you're about to hear may shock you or make you cringe or make you laugh. Yes, we're dropping the fourth wall. Then we'll air a sponsor appreciation spotlight episode featuring the owner of our oldest sponsorship, 518 Prince. Foosball fanatic and owner Jesse Brust joins us for a full interview. Jesse talks about his business as well as his foosball career. He even describes what it was like to face the legend himself, Johnny Horton. Then we're going backstage again for more spontaneous banter. So buckle up. It's about to get very entertaining on Foos Talk Live. In the beginning, we chatted about the technical issues facing us and how Clay Toomey has been instrumental in giving us the best possible sound. Um, Tom says, I'm here, can't hear anyone. Because he's not in the channel. Uh, Click Foos Talk Live under voice channel. He's in the text channel. Man, a bunch of boomers, I tell you. Dude. Rookies. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'll do something uh at the latest starting next Monday. What are you and doing then, tomorrow, dude? Is it personal? Is it something I should is it intrusive I ask? Ten, ten but, years but, ago tomorrow. Yeah. I mean it is uh-huh. intrusive and it also it's also personal, but I'm open about it. So I'm I'm not uh-huh. offended by the question at all. Uh yeah. uh so I got out of prison on August thirty first, twenty ten, and tomorrow is oh, ten wow. years to the wow. day. So congratulations, man. Thank you, man. I celebrate August 31st every year. Uh, it's a, it's the biggest day on my personal calendar. So, uh, and dude, this year's since, 10 years sorry. is just a, a, just a special anniversary. So that's all. Dude, it is. Since you're so open and unfiltered yeah. and this is uh, right here and you'd like to do, did you rob the banks to write the book? No. All right. <laughs> so it must've been like, it was like 2004. The last time I went to one, it was with Jay Bartholow, Sergi, Fernando, it was a bunch of uh, foosball morons, and we were at Vegas at the Hall of Fame Classic, and I was like the most, I just sat there, couldn't stand it. I could like, I don't know, you would have thought I was a serial killer or something. I didn't want them near me. I was just like, you know, I know it's happening. It was really nice, but you know how they sit next to you, and they're trying to pander to you to yeah. get money, loiter. I just couldn't do it, man. I'm like, this. And meanwhile, uh, Jay was broken. Like, we were there for three hours. Jay Barthel was broke in like 20 minutes. Had no money left <laughs> in like 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, Jim, you're kind of quiet. I'm just listening, buddy. Oh, just okay. just yeah, take, taking notes and, and right, learning. Cool. How is it? Is it? Is it? Do I sound good? Do we sound, sound good? All right. Sound excellent. All right. How's mine? Um, I put my headset on for this yeah, sounds, special occasion. Sounds wonderful. You sound like you sound like a pro, man. You sound like a pro. So we re- we ready for this uh, shit storm tonight? Clay, you keep us, you know, with your. Which we follow very closely. The the chat in here. Yeah. Uh, you you keep us keep us on point also, and and keep us short if you can. Let us know when sure. things are lagging, and and do your usual work, your usual behind the scenes magic. Right. So about to, about that. Be sure that in the text, there's two text channels. I only type in the Foos Talk Live text channel. Don't throw any okay. because people will be in the general tonight. If you mm-hmm. type in the general, everybody's going to see it. Type in the Foos Talk Live only. Okay. We will see it. So mm-hmm. that okay. I'll be sure All to right. keep. I mean, you can go back and forth between the two, but I wouldn't sure. throw any Darth Vader jokes into the general. Uh, into <laughs> yeah, the general yeah. Room. I don't. I keep clicking on the wrong thing. I guess for the text channel. What am I doing? Oh, at the top. Yeah, text. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, it's a good thing Clay's around. Oh, tell us, tell okay. us what the hell to do. And I'm going to meet with them actually in about 15 minutes or so. And okay. so we're. I'll, I'll hop up over in the general channel whenever somebody's here. And and I think I just kind of cut you off and started talking. So my bad. But I'll be quick. Um, they're not going to be able to listen because I'm going to be talking with them, making sure everyone, okay. I'm, ba- I'm going to babysit for a good, yeah. you know, 10 minutes just to make sure everybody knows how Thank to use you for their doing mute that, by button. The way. 
<laughs> and all this stuff. That is a huge deal right now. That's just an awesome deal for him, just for you to do that. You know, and I want to. I'm, I'm voting for a raise for Clay. Yeah, raise. yeah, multiply. Clay, oh my God. God. Yeah, yeah, man. Clay, congratulations. You're now yeah, almost at minimum wage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got I got a quick gripe though. I got a, I got a really quick gripe, and this is like the third Sunday in a row. But last week the Lakers won the world championship in the NBA while I was on the on the show, and I'm a huge Laker fan. Nobody gives a fuck. Place place that's that's an asterisk. Dude, that's a that's a world championship <laughs> asterisk then, win, by the way. Tonight, tonight, no, it isn't. It no, it isn't. It's the hardest yeah, no. circumstances anyone's ever had to. Right. Oh God, is that the spin? People being phoned in, it in. And being in on. three three months in a bubble, that's pretty tough. Um, it's the reason ridiculous. nobody was able to beat them is because they were in a bubble too. You were saying, and it goes both um, ways. Okay. Well, should, ask this world all, all I ask, all I ask from both of you is you do a little homework before you talk about this subject. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> the um, the tonight is yeah, kind of get an idea of what you're talking about. What if I so, said it's not true? Well, the whole, silence is golden. Bam! The whole, <laughs> the whole in a bubble oh, thing. Man, that just was like you could <laughs> feel the stumble. Before we go any further, I did a little homework. I've got a little bit of special something, something. I want to play you guys before we actually do it live. But okay. uh, here, here's something special. Foos Talk Live is a product of Foosball Radio and Inside Foos TV. All rights reserved. Our sincere thanks to 518 Prince, Foosball Clubs USA, Foosballers The Movie, Foos by Tony and Foos by Brandon, and the United States Table Soccer Organization. Join us next Sunday for another episode of Foos Talk Live. In the meantime, we'll see you foosin'. <laughs> That's great. That's perfect, There's the new dude. standard outro right there. Oh my gosh, and she's standing right here. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, oh, Ari. Said, that's Ari, right? Didn't yeah. she? That's Ari yeah. saying that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ari. Yeah. We used. Yep. You remember last week when you said we'll see you foozing? Last week. Well, two weeks. Two months ago, but okay. Two months. What the, what on her birthday. Was? It was on her birthday. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. So it was a month ago. Um, I'm about to go today, coincidentally. Jim, would you do some research next time? <laughs> I will, buddy. I promise. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah. So, so no, I, I've, um, I'm, I'm recovering a little bit from, uh, from a weekend with uh, a couple of family members who I haven't seen in a long time. Well, I, I think uh, the, the, the subject of Maker's Mark came up once or twice. <laughs> uh, so that was last night. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got some, some, some Red Bull by my side. And uh, I'm gotcha. gonna make it. Okay. I'm gonna so make no it. IPA. No IPA. Red Bull, the IPA is oh, staying. It's staying. All right. All right. Bring the, this week, Jim, I'm having the hair of the dog <laughs> IPA. <laughs> 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 Thank you, but I'll the be skeleton so... ran out of shampoo in the shower. The skeleton ran out of shampoo in the shower. <laughs> 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 well, the the uh, it seems like every single week we go through this and we have another improvement. And uh, Clay, mm -hmm. Clay, you were like the you were like the quantum leap when you came along. Mm -hmm. Introduced this Discord thing. That was the quantum leap that we needed to get uh, beyond yeah. our other issues. Well, I'll tell you, it's nice to uh, to to have been received so well because I get a little aggressive with my suggestions sometimes, yeah, and I piss a lot that. of people off, man. I mean, I <laughs> promise you, dude. And I don't care is the is the problem. So I'm well, glad. you have your your uh, your natural curiosity, and of course the the fact of the matter is, it's like, hey, if it can be better, why isn't it? Yeah, why why isn't it better? Exactly. Why yeah, it better. I'm not big for settling. And then also, there's all that that thing where, oh yeah, I actually know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. right. No, that's the thing, yeah, and you do, and and that's that that's why you can be pushy, is yeah. because you do you do know what you're talking about. So um, there are plenty of yeah. people who do not agree. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no no! <laughs> Read the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <right. laughs> None of those people are on this call, by the way, so I wouldn't worry about it exactly. at all. Exactly. Now, along the way, some ideas had to pass the smell test and be subjected to opinions. Mm -hmm. I was um I was wondering um and I'm just you know just kind of tossing this against the wall. How in general how much uh how much are you in love with the mystery guy? I mean that idea. Hmm. There we uh, go. That quantified it right there. The, mm. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that's what I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jim, I didn't mean to put it in your mouth there. I have some ideas for, for the stream that's going to involve getting okay. your table under yeah. a camera, man. 
You just want to see my push kick. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> I've seen your push kick. It's slow enough that I've seen it every time you've shot it. Well, if you have good video equipment that you can you know, slow it down, sure. But um, oh, uh, you, you really want to go? You really want to talk about our table one matches here, Clay? It is not easy for most people to just be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it kind of takes practice sometimes and some people are just natural at it and you, you, you're very good at doing it on your show uh, for sure. And the the has low. to be very, very low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the, the gas factor has to be almost zero. Now it's going to be pure debate and, uh, more about uh, subjective opinion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and other people, you know, will encourage them to, uh, to dive in. If you don't agree, you know, call. Uh, yeah. think if you don't call. agree, once you kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, Jim. Got a new microphone. And also just being able, like, especially it's so nice to be able to mix. Microphone. Say it again. I said, especially with my beautiful new microphone. Yeah. yeah. The closer <laughs> you get, the lower it goes. Yeah, Jim's going to try to try to stick his face through it if you tell him that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I, I was going to de demonstrate a puker. Oh, yeah. Pukers. So pukers in radio, uh, they, they kind of came out of the 50s and 60s, you know, with the, with the big reverb behind them. You mm -hmm. know, they're these guys. And there are a lot of them that kind of, you know, that, that grew up on that. They carried it through into the 70s, which didn't make a whole lot of sense because everything changed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they talk like this all the time. Hey, if you want the weather, we'll give it to you right now. Hey, <laughs> thanks for joining us. We're going to we're going to hit you right over the head with this one. And it's like this false, you know, mm -hmm. false uh, a smile. Yeah. And it, and it just uh, we call them pukers. I want uh, you to ref a match in that voice. <laughs> and just make, and just make but, yeah, all the hits all the time. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, I grew up with I grew up with pukers for sure on, yeah, yeah, on yeah. 93 KHJ there in LA. AM, AM radio. KHJ. Yeah. KHJ, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, classic. Yeah. KRLA. Oh, God. There's a, there's a few famous ones out there that just, you know, this one guy, he, um, he, he worked for WWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWW
God. Oh, man. Oh, I took the rubber band off. Oh, this feels so much better. Oh, my God. My nuts. I hope you're recording my this. Are board. you recording this? Always, add, man. Add this, to, add this to the show. Wow. Add this to next week's show, Tom. That was perfect. Yeah. Thank you for, add that to the show. Right. Thank you for calling Verizon. May I help you? Oh. Verizon. <laughs> Verizon. Yeah. But they say, man, what the hell? What what the hell is Verizon, man? What the hell? You ain't no better L and Verizon. What the hell are you talking about? Verizon. Verizon. You be lying. You be lying right now. You be lying more like it. You be lying. You be lying. Telephone communications ad. Oh, what, the hell? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Uh, your your deep black voice is the most convincing. It's really good, this man. It's the microphone, head. though. It's the microphone. Right? Not, you may have heard we do share an interest in um, spirits. Well, what is happening here, you guys? Someone's going to hey, get through. Any second. It, 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 we, should, we should be recording this. Tom, you are recording telling... these pre show meetings now, right? Well, you know, God, Maker's Mark just got in the way there. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Maker's I will mark. Mark. That's our buzzword for tonight. Anytime, anytime that anything happens tonight, we just say Maker's Mark. Maker's, Maker's mark. mark. I might grab a beer. <laughs> shit. What am I doing? You guys are drinking all the time. I don't drink shit while I'm on this show. <laughs> do, do, do you even drink beer? I thought you were like a high end um, vodka drinker. I'm a Grey Goose on the Rocks guy, but I yeah. can do. I have two. We have, we have two hard ciders there in the go. refrigerator wow. right now. If I drink, it's Grey, it's Grey Goose chilled. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. Really? Children on the rocks. Children on the rocks. Children, I'm yeah. gonna make a note of that. I'd never heard Clay say anything like that before. I mean, I just um, I usually don't. But if somebody or a or a or a mule, Moscow mule, Steve Murray yeah. likes to get me drinking down here sometimes at the football oh, games. I like that. God, that'd be fun. Clay, but uh, Clay, why do I imagine you as a volatile drunk? Are you like a volatile drunk, or are you a naked? No, I'm drunk? a volatile okay. sober, actually. Oh, that's uh, it. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, no. When I, when I drink, I'm just like. It put, it's just like Benadryl. It just kind of puts me down. It's a totally mm -hmm. just chilled, relaxed. If anything, it probably helps that I'm, makes me less volatile. You didn't mean it. <laughs> didn't mean what? What I said? I, I missed kidding. it. You were you were on a Zoom call with her. With her and you, yeah. Which he, he, Mark was making a joke Mark's about. It. It was that like you were Dory. talking to Dory. Gosh, they have to explain jokes. Holy! Well, cow. it needs to be a joke. You can explain <laughs> yeah, the story. That, that's gotta, true too. If you got to explain the too. joke, it's not a joke. It's just a story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you well, go. Yeah, he is volatile today. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. I, I, I am. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stand back and just let this thing happen. Sorry, sorry, Tom. I, I think we got it all out of our system now, and I think we're 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 going to be professionals now. We're going to be Get professionals. Back. Just let it happen. We're going to be professionals. We're going to be professionals. I know. I know we could be professional. We got to get it out. This is good for getting it out. This is good for getting it out before the show starts. Yes. It yep. Is. Yep. It really is. For sure. If you had any doubts, it's also yeah. one of the most entertaining parts of the whole thing, though. <laughs> yeah. it, is. it is. And, and yeah. I haven't even started drinking yet. Uh, I better remedy that. Then we invited Midori Kimura into the pre show madness. Next weekend, by the way, I said this a while back, and I don't know if anybody remembers it, but the Halloween episode where everybody just does a different character. <laughs> oh. Oh, ooh, that's I like week, that. Dude. That's next week. Well, yeah. now we know Mark uh, can be Jim. Oh, horrible so. Jim. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> it was the worst <laughs> Jim ever. It was closer to Fred than it was Jim. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, I'm going to promote this show as the worst Jim impersonation was... of all time. Yep. <laughs> dude, did you ever hear? Did you ever hear? I like that down. Did you ever hear Jim's impression of Fred on the? Yeah. On the... Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, I got that on video because that was on the stream. The worst. Oh, that is good. That Can is we get a like a like a voice clip of both of those of Jim doing Fred and Mark doing Jim? Exactly. Exactly. I, I can. I can pull that from tonight, and I can go back and pull it from Jim. Absolutely. Meaning, lady. No. Just come full circle and get Fred to do a Mark Torres. We'll do your best in imitation of drunk Trevor Park. There you go. Oh, that... Hello. So yeah, the, the, the I'm sorry, went for pheromones. Pablo. Did you say pheromones. Yeah. Pablo. Yeah. Pablo. 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 Please, 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 Please come home un poquito, Pablo. They don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
What did you say about <laughs> you're something else? My dog. Pheromones. You said, <laughs> I said Jim's, Jim's voice is like <laughs> audio pheromones. <laughs> yeah, you said it that. Is. You My actually dog? said that. Oh. That's crazy. I had to Equally. Google pheromones because I'm like, well, I know what pheromones are and what they mean. But let me, let me make sure that I understand that because, yeah. Silky. Uh, His voice, is, <laughs> voice is silky like pheromones. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. This, is, this, is my, this is my idea for next week. No show. Just okay, show. one of these days. We're going to forget to like be off the air when this is happening. Right. That's, that's awesome. the goal. It, and that's, that's the goal. Awesome. Oh, we're still live. Oh, man. Oh, so, <laughs> this is what's most. And by the way, Tom, I, I still say that these should be recorded. Sometimes they are, by the way. Did you hear what Mark said last week? You know, and, and play the. <laughs> that's perfect, dude. Listen, dude, another thing, if you what would it would cost to keep running the show? We could have just kept running the show until viewers dropped off and seen what happened. We could have just kept going for another 45 minutes until yeah. it weathered away because there was still the same number of people at the very end that there were when sure. it got right. No, no, nobody, uh, nobody jumped ship, which is cool. No, and it uh, it got better as soon as the uh, the retrospective ended. So, um, yeah, yeah, my it, numbers it, were actually legit when I said that, Mark, when I was like, it's yeah, going no, up 120 yeah. percent. Like yeah, I, I I'm one of the few people in foosball who, act, when I say a number, it actually means something. It's not just you're not yeah you're not pulling foos. Yeah, well, I'm I'm the opposite. I just make numbers up all the time. More fourth wall magic still to come. When we answer one question, does Tom your senior actually sit to pee? And then she Welcome to Foosball Radio. Now, here's our sponsor appreciation spotlight episode with Jesse Brust of 518 Prince. Now, this was recorded just prior to the pandemic. Welcome to Foosball Radio. I'm Tom Robinson on behalf of Chuck and Nino. Uh, we're doing a, a very specific episode today. This is called the Sponsor Appreciation Episode. And uh, one of the, uh, the sponsors you've probably noticed over the last several episodes is a company called 518 Prints. 518 Prints is a company that specializes in doing merchandise of all kinds, uh, which include printing, uh, logos, and uh, doing the kinds of things that uh, people uh, need to, shall we say, represent themselves when they're out in the public for t-shirts and hats and you name it. Uh, 518 Prince has been around for quite a while, long time, and the owner of 518 Prince not only is uh, a genius when it comes to this kind of work and has been doing it for a while, but also is a passionate foosball player. His name is Jesse Brust. Jesse, welcome to Foosball Radio. Oh, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, so when it comes to 518 Prints, first of all, how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been printing for, uh, we've been in business for just about 15 years. 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how did it start? What was the, what was the germ of uh, the idea? Um, well, I started printing for um, bands in my basement. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so metal bands, hardcore bands, like the underground metal scene. <laughs> so music was the uh, the catalyst? Yeah, music. Are you a musician? Uh, yeah, I play guitar. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Okay, and uh, you perform in a band? No, not not anymore. I, I did at the time. I was in a band, and oh, so nice. so they just kind of was a, a natural um, thing that I fell into. I, I like screen printing. Mm -hmm. um, there is a long kind of story with it, but... To keep it short, I ended up in my basement printing shirts for bands. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like really just this home-based business that you thought, hey, I'm passionate about this and let's let's do this. Yep. Yep. I loved it that much. So how long was it before you moved out of your basement? Um, took took a, a couple of years. A couple okay, of years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, was there a point at which you said, I want to make this more of a full-time business? Yeah. So one day... Um, T-shirt printing will create this kind of like lint, this starch that'll that'll 
uh, happen when you cure shirts through a dryer. Okay. And one day I'm in my living room and my wife turns on the ceiling fan and all of this t-shirt went, went flying <laughs> all over the room. And I realized at that point that I needed to find a warehouse, get out of our basement and, mm -hmm. and really kind of get it going. We had, we had six guys working full time out of my basement. Really? Yeah. That must have been interesting. It was very interesting. Uh, big basement? No, not oh. a big basement. Not a big basement at all. We were all crammed down there. I had, I had manual presses going down there. Uh, I was getting fines from the garbage people. I had UPS no kidding. deliveries and pickups out of my house. It was it was a very interesting scene. That's hilarious. Yeah. Now, you're in a, in a location currently. How long have you been in that location? Uh, just 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, 10, nice. 10 years. And how many people there were? Uh, we were 17. 17 employees. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the the, 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 the business itself, 518 Prints, uh, of course, people have heard your the name of your company during Foosball Radio. Yeah. Uh, what What is it you'd like to tell people that they need to know about when it comes to using your services? Um, the, the most important part is um, come with artwork. Come with artwork, come with ideas. A lot yes. of people, a lot of people, they, they have these clear intentions of wanting to get uh, product produced. Yep. And they'll kind of put that on me and say, hey, I want, I want to do some t-shirts. And so what can mm. you do? I can't really do anything for you unless you have clear artwork. Um, and if you want me to design your artwork, I need to have like really clear and concise uh, ideas sure. to design the artwork. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll get nowhere. Um, so the the most the the best thing that I can say is if you want to come and produce apparel or whatever it is you want to produce, banners, um, sure. all sorts of items. Um, the art is the most important ground floor piece your logos having good resolution of those logos um having good clear ideas of what you want to do how mm -hmm. you want to place mm -hmm. um the images on your apparel the colors you want to use having a good game plan yeah uh, like we have when we go into a foosball match yes. is what you want to have when you go into ordering apparel, <laughs> <Love the> apparel. <laughs> you yeah, like that, that? For me. yeah very cool now when uh when someone approaches you and let's say they're uh I don't know, a local bank yeah. and they've got maybe a fundraiser going and they want to have everybody in the same t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, if let's say this bank says, okay, we need these t-shirts in two weeks. Yeah. What do you say? Uh, no problem. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a bank, I know, I know a bank is going to have a good high resolution logo right away. Yes. So as long as I have good art, I'll turn those orders quick. Okay. It all comes down to the artwork. If I'm, if I'm having to struggle with sending a client designs and they're not happy with the designs and then I have to bring it back to my design team to then kind of recreate it, yeah. um, that, that then it's a struggle. It's a, we're in a creative process. We're not in the manufacturing process yet. We're in the creative process. I got you. I know with a bank, they're going to say, here's my logo, mm -hmm. put it on the front of the shirt mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm going to be able to turn that very quick because, you know, right. we have the ability to do that. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, customers certainly come away very satisfied because you get it so to them so quickly. We try. We yeah. try. Yeah. So um, two weeks is our, our standard turnaround. Most of the time I'm hitting, you know, within a week. Okay. Um, so, but I like to give two weeks just to be able to produce work comfortably. And the sure. more time you have, the less errors and things like that. Yeah, no question. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so. When it comes to foosball, yeah, this is the thing I think that most people are listening to foosball radio are interested. Uh, how many foosball projects have you done for T-shirts and hats and stuff? How many things have you done in the past? Um, well, I've done I've done some things for our our local club, five one eight five one eight foosball. Yep. Um, I've done some things for Warrior foosball. Okay. Um, you know, Tom Mosier was a was a local five one eight head. Right. Even exactly. though he claims yeah. to be all California now. Um, so <laughs> lucky him. You feel the dig I'm throwing out there. <laughs> um, so uh, so Warrior. Um, I've done some things for Tony. Um, oh, nice. which is awesome. Yep. Tony. Yeah. Um, and he still wants to produce stuff, but Tony and I, we have this, this design thing going back to design thing. He wants things to look a certain way. And, yes. um, so I really just need art from Tony. So Tony, if you're listening, just send me art. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, the concept. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 
Um, what else? Um, let's see, New York State uh, foosball tournaments. Okay. Um, so yeah, doing some stuff. I, I know if I if I were to go home right now and dig through the uh, the dresser, yeah. I'd probably find six or seven of your examples. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. More I got than likely. Yeah. Some I got I got stuff. some I got some foos teas out there. Yeah. Yep. No question. <laughs> so uh, now the other part of what you do is your passion for playing foosball. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Um, well, I was playing, uh, real, uh, I was at it for, for about five years and now I've taken a little bit of a break. I've been off for a couple of years now. Okay. Um, but I still have my table set up in my storefront. Nice. Um, so I still get some practice in, um, I would say, you know, weekly practice in, but it's light. It's a lot lighter when I was, than when I was. Uh, more competitive right no, um so sure. it's still there it's still you know uh, a part of me but mm -hmm. um but I've, I've stopped kind of going out to tour stops for right now sure um uh, so you know it's been about maybe eight years yeah eight mm -hmm. years of playing mm -hmm. now what got you into the game what got me into it originally was going to the roller skating rink when I was really young. You know, I go to the roller skating <laughs> rink and all the big guys were playing foosball. Do right? tell. And yeah. you were how old? I mean, I, I was probably like, man, probably eight or nine years old. I go with my sister, yeah, my older sister, to the roller skating rink, and she would always get on the foosball play, play table, and I, I'd look at her and be like, oh, I want to play, so I get on there. And they'd show me some things. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the bug set in, you know, I was at the roller skating rink. Um, and what, then, what kind of tables were they playing? There they, they, was a tornado. It was a coin op tornado table in there. Really? Yeah, I think so. If I remember correctly, it was a, it was a, like a, like a marble or something brown, maybe a brown box. I, I can't, sure, can't sure. you know, I was young, you know, like really young. Um, but years later after that, I mean, I remember loving the game and like anytime I went out to like a bar or wherever and I saw a table, I'd always want to hop on it. Right. So I had it in me. But years later, I, I was, I think I was searching around on Craigslist mm -hmm. and I'm like, I want to buy a foosball table. Like for the house? For the house. Yeah. And that was it. It was like magic. So I ended up buying Jim Peters foosball table. Jim Peters, if you're from the 518, know exactly who Jim is. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, he's a local, local competitor, you know, great guy, gnarly dude. <laughs> and um, that's, that's putting it lightly. Though. Yeah, that's putting it lightly. And, and so I bought Jim Peters table um, and I was and he was like, yeah, man. So, you know, you, you want to play some foods? What, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm just trying to pick this up from my house. And he's like, well, you can play down here mm -hmm. at, at trick shots. So that same night that I picked up the table, I drove down the tr trick shots Okay, and it was like an instant shot of drugs. I was just like, oh, yeah. man, I just walked into it. Here First it time is. and then you were hooked. Yeah. I mean, I saw it and I saw the dudes in there and they obviously just whooped up on me all night. <laughs> And I loved it. <laughs> and I think Mosher was like head of that, mm -hmm. you know, brigade of just destroying me. Right. Um, and then it was like instant hooked. I was back there every week. And then I'm on my table. I'm trying to figure it all out. And instant just on. You clearly passed the crucible test. Yeah. You were, you were, yeah, you took, you took the, the lumps and kept coming back. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Tom, Tom, I used to go over to Tom Moser's house and he would sit on a bar stool and beat me with one hand and <laughs> in front of my wife, it was, a, it was, a, it was a very humbling experience. I know your wife has played too. Yep. Yep. She, she got, she started to get in, you know, get in there and, and, and kind of just locally and, and like whenever we'd have like, you know, home practice, we'd invite friends over, she would play, she actually started to get like pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, Tom, Tom was definitely like the start and like beating up on me and kind of showing me, uh, you know, the, the way of foos and then it kind of moved into, you know, Greg Mandel showing me more and right. then, and then, and then right into Walker just being like here. <laughs> so that would be Kevin Walker yeah. uh, from the 518 who people have seen out on the tour and who's, uh, who's made quite a name. He's now a pro master. Yeah. And uh, what is your current ranking, by the way? Uh, I think it's expert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you've had the opportunity to play with Kevin on the road? A few yeah. Times? Yeah. Kevin and I, um, 
we did a nice like string of stuff like we went to the hall of fame mm -hmm. um, we went to worlds uh two or three years I, all this stuff is going to be loose like my dates are loose in my <laughs> head but um <laughs> we went to worlds uh a couple times so we won elites i think it, at the hall of fame um i feel like we came in fifth and maybe fourth place uh in open worlds yes um and uh, I don't know, we've done some other things too. Maybe like when he was a pro, maybe we, we won some pro stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so Kevin and I like had like a nice run together where we were really partnered up and working together on the game. And he nice. was teaching me a lot. I was learning a lot, basically kind of riding on his back, but he was showing me so much. I was kind of progressing mm -hmm. at the same time um, in, my, in my goalie game. So I just like, you know, kind of gold up for him yeah and learned how to play with him and uh and and we developed a game that worked between us mm -hmm. and 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 you know I, f I feel like we were a solid team and 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 we you know I was just talking the other day while we were we were hiking and and I think I think 20 2021 really yeah 2021 <clears throat> come back we want to we, we we have this we have this match okay. against against uh, Gummison and McMillan. Uh, we we That's David Gummison yeah, and yeah Tracy McMillan. Tracy McMillan. Yeah, so okay. we 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 faced them. It was twice at Worlds, and they got us both times. And 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 they're just such an awesome team. Yes. And um, I just I just want to I just want to get back at them. Just want to get back have, to them. Gotta have goals, right? Yeah, you, you I just want to get back to them and 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 give it another go. You know, I mean. Uh, I'm a, you know, I just want to work at that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I greatly uh, re I respect that yeah, immensely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that when it comes to tournament play, do you remember the first time you, uh, shall we say, competed uh, in, a, in a major tournament and you you won? Ooh, and that? won. And won. Oh, I don't know. Was that, wasn't there like an amateur event or something like that? You Maybe. Could... Well, yeah. So, so Brent, like, um, let's see. So we uh, going out the world. I mean, I won uh, beginner, beginner doubles with, yes. with Brendan Dillon. Right. Um, so as a beginner, you know, we, we, we were winning. And then um, I can't remember what I did in amateurs. I think. I think maybe we came out and won amateurs, but I never had any success in experts. That's where right. okay. basically I just did this whole shift and just shot out experts and just started playing with Kevin mm -hmm. moving into these like crazy matches in the open category. Right. Um, and I never had too much luck in like settling in experts and uh, finding like a good partner to kind of run with. Sure. Uh, do you remember what you felt like when you had uh, that first big win as far as the final, even in beginners, what was that like for you? What, that, you? that, I mean, winning, winning beginner doubles at worlds was, 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 and it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. But, but the, you know, a win, a specific win that mm -hmm. sticks out in my mind. And it wasn't, it wasn't even for, uh, it wasn't even for a title, but a win was when Kevin and I got to play uh, Johnny Horton and Biney on the floor. Really? Yeah, at Worlds. And that that was like a big moment for me because in our local area here at the 518, Horton mm -hmm. is uh, a talked about individual. Legendary. Yeah, legendary. And so here I am in the pit, uh, you know, uh, trying to defend johnny horan's pull shot and mm -hmm. and i've just heard stories about his pull shot for years now and uh you know and kevin's up front trying to put it in on Biney, and it was just an absolute battle um we went uh, third match wait it, like last point last point you could go to wow yeah it, it was it was it was awesome and and the coolest part is like we were on the floor in the room at worlds mm -hmm. so it wasn't a pit match we were just out on the floor right and the whole floor had gathered around our table watch to watch this match and uh you know kevin and i still talk about that match because like you know when you're out on the floor and you got a group of people that are like watching your match it's like yeah they, they kind of have come over to watch the match because you know in a pit you got the bleachers, you can come and sit and just it's being filmed. Yeah, it's being filmed. You yeah. can watch. But like we had a room full of people around us watching, you know, and uh 
and and Horton just being such a, a legend to our area. Um, that was cool. And we, we came away with that win. Um, and that, that was big. That was big for me. Yeah. That, that was, that was awesome. Johnny Horton. I'm out. Yeah. And, I'm and, there. and yeah. And his pull shot is just, is just undeniable. You know, sick, it, yeah. it, it is just absolutely sick. And, yeah. You know, I felt like I was holding my own. I was making some good, uh, connection with Kevin pass wise to keep the game under control. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you know, but that's not to say I was blocking Horton by any means, you know, it was just keeping the percentage, keep, keeping it lower, yeah. keeping everything tight, not sure. letting, not letting Kevin feel like I was getting rattled, mm -hmm. um, which would then rattle him. And, um, you know, playing with Kevin, like when, when it's tight games or deep into the, deep into the count, that's where we always played. That right. was our most comfortable area. You kind of just uh, hit cruise control. That's it. You know, yeah. when, it, you know, it, it shot for shot with Kevin um, and, and he always played deep in the count. He wasn't, he wasn't one to come out and just kind of clean it. Uh, okay. He, he, Kevin's very methodical. He look for, look for setups, look to shoot at something uh, that was low percentage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's how he'll take you. That's how he'll yeah. win. Now, philosophically, when you're in a, in a in deep in a match like that, what what is it that's going through your mind? How do you focus? How do I focus? Uh, what's going through my mind uh, as a goalie is charting everything that the forward has done uh, before. Okay. So uh, if if that you know in terms of that Horton match, I mean if he if he went straight, I'm charting. I know he went straight. I know he did a pull. I know he went middle. Just charting where he's right. going, what he's comfortable with. His favorite spots. His favorite spots. Trying to take note of what makes him uncomfortable mm. and not utilizing what makes him uncomfortable right away. So then taking that uncomfortable defense, maybe that you presented something that he got hung up on, mm -hmm. and then throwing that back in your tool bag until – you know, until your last points, crucial moments. Yep. Until your last points, you gotta, you gotta chart where they're going. You gotta chart the times that they're shooting. Um, you really gotta pay attention to their every single move. Now, so that's it, what's going through my head. Does an individual like a Johnny Horton, does he typically wait a full 15 seconds? He, Johnny can do whatever he wants to yeah. do, you know, um, <laughs> that, that, that particular match, um, because, and this happened to us a lot, because I'm nobody to Johnny, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, haven't been out on the scene nearly as long as him. You know, right. I, I felt like he was moving his shot uh, shot count up. Okay. You know what I mean? Probably okay. feeling like he could roll me a little bit, but I kind of had uh, smarts to that. Right. You know what I mean? I gotcha. Um, and so I ended up as the as the match progressed, showing him a D that. I felt he was a little bit more uncomfortable with. Now there's mm -hmm. literally no defense that he's going to be uncomfortable with, but something at the time. Um, an adjustment. An adjustment. It's yeah. all about timing and adjustments. Um, and that's how that goes down. And so, you know, yeah, you just play it through. And how many times have you watched uh, specifically Johnny Horton play before that match? Oh. I mean, I pull, I pull up his tapes, you yeah. know, I pull up his tapes because his style, uh, is, I mean, if you pull up a Horton pull shot, it's, it's, it's going to look a lot like Kevin's pull shot. In fact, okay. in fact, I was watching a Horton match once and I forget what match it was, but I'm, I'm watching Johnny shoot and I literally texted Kevin and I was like, dude. I'm like, your pull shot looks a lot like Horton's. And he's like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm like, you know, like, and you know, it's different and similar, all the same, right. Sure. You know, you could pick it all apart, but like, uh, you know, Johnny had a stint in this area, Greg, uh, Mendel, yep. you know, Johnny Horton. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of, uh, you know, Kevin's game does shine kind of from, from that. Well, he comes from the Mendel, uh, School. Yeah, the Mendel School, right? <clears throat> um, and so 
uh, yeah, I've watched a lot of Johnny stuff, and, and he's just uh, he's an amazing player, you yeah. know, an yeah. incredible player, a legendary no yeah. question about yeah. it. And a legendary character, a story. legendary character. He's like, he's like, um, I, I kind of look at him as like, you know, like WWF wrestling, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, when Johnny walks in the room, like, he's just there's an aura, you know, yeah. about him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and a lot, you know, a lot of people will kind of you know like not talk shit on it but like you know he's created drama over the years but like in a way it's kind of entertaining it's kind of fun i it's think this of... is the thing i'm hearing from a lot of people that that uh, he adds something to the game he adds some... personality yeah he adds something to the game yeah. it, you know all the characters in the room and, and that's you know one of the reasons why we all show up to the room yep is all those different characters you know and, and catching up with old friends is yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no it's uh with the culture of foosball the way it is, the way it always has been, there's this family, this yeah. camaraderie. Yeah. And to be a part of this family is pretty special. Yeah. You know? Especially when you're you're going to Kentucky and you're running into people you haven't seen in a year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, hey, what's going on? You can catch up. And then, of course, you're facing them on the table. Yeah. Which it's is really special. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I know. You, they're, they're like your best friends, and then all of a sudden, they're your worst yeah. enemy. They hate you. Yeah. Just, wow. Well, I'm going to put you in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> but foosball, for, you know, speaking of the family yes. uh, aspect of foosball, I mean, the it, it, it's an absolutely beautiful community. So my wife and I, uh, we would go down to Costa Rica for vacationing. Right. And um, one time we're down there. And on the last night, I hit up, you know, some of, some of my Costa Rican buddies. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like, yeah you're here you're down here we'll set something up for your last night at bulldogs and oh, i was really? like what really like a, a like a, a smash they down set up a little DYP little or... dyp they yeah. set up a little dyp all these peeps came out and it was literally just because my wife and i were there wow they literally just like were like yeah let's play foos like See, let's get it going that's the beautiful thing about this yep. yeah Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it is. You speak a language that they speak, regardless yeah. of what country you're from. I mean, it's is amazing because, I mean, I, the, no, we couldn't really speak to each other, but right. we were speaking through the table, you yeah. know, the whole the whole night. We had a blast. And literally, I think we played until like three in the morning. My wife and I, we had to catch an international flight at like 10 a.m. So we, we didn't even sleep pushing it yeah I and mean, we did the classic foosball move right let's yeah. play let's play foosball through the night and fly out in the morning it'll be fine yep no problem yep now what kind of tables were they playing on um they had tornadoes set up in there oh okay yep they had tornadoes um let me see i think they had i think they had one fireball okay at the end i think they might have had like two two tornadoes and maybe two fireballs something like that mm -hmm. and bulldogs mm -hmm. if i remember this is a while back right yeah so yeah so costa rica beautiful place huh yeah, it's amazing and uh they they're uh i guess uh was it tony spraderman when we talked to him he was mentioning how he was heading there uh for a tournament uh, yeah this is about a year or so ago yeah uh, but he said he loves costa rica yeah so. it, it's it's an amazing place um it has uh I think it has, if I remember correctly, it's it's uh, the loc where it's located, where it's geographically located. It has mm -hmm. the most microclimates in oh. the world. Like I think so, you can go from like this arid, deserty, mm -hmm. like to to jungle, tropic, like all of these like kind of climates to like mountainous. Huh. Yeah, it, it just has so much going on between like volcanoes and like yeah. jungle and like all this, you know. Yeah, it sounds like an amazing place. It is, know. yeah. It's just there's no re like anybody should just go to Costa Rica and and live it up and play some foosball and play foos. <laughs> like that's the thing. Like yeah. you know those those guys are like the nicest people. And well, hold on, they are awesomely nice. But when they get on the table. They want to destroy you. Really? Oh yeah. For I mean, they're just fierce competitors. So, yeah, the passion. Fierce competitors. Yeah. Absolutely fierce. But we like that. That's we, yeah, we love that. Yeah, we, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. Yep. No. Um, no. When it comes to the to the near future for you, when it comes to foosball, you mentioned twenty twenty one. What are you going to do as you get back into the to the fold here, and, and uh, what what kind of preparations are you going to make use of to uh, to get yourself back in? Oh man. 
Do lots of sit-ups. Lots of sit-ups. <laughs> <laughs> building the stamina again. Lots of sit-ups. Lots of core work. Core, core strength. Yeah, yeah, lots of core strength. All right, cool. Um, you know, just hit the table some more. I got to get on the table more. I got to reach back out to the guys. And, mm -hmm. You know, I'm missing them. You're um, welcome anytime. I know, I know. <laughs> I know <laughs> little, little bits at a time, but, but you know, when it kicks in, just it's, it's going to, uh, I'll just pick a schedule and stick to it. Yeah. Like, that's really what. Very deliberate. Yeah. yeah. A deliberate schedule. Like, You've always been like that. And just yeah. everything you do when it yeah. comes to being a foosball player or obviously with your business. Yeah. Deliberate. Yeah. That's it. You know, just, you got to pick the schedule, put, put something in your mind. Um, start talking to Kevin a lot more because mm -hmm. he's like a, a computer you know he um, is a machine he's a machine yeah 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 he's a machine you can see the calculations going almost while he's playing the game yeah you know, he, kind of, he, he calculates and he waits and he, he looks and calculates yeah. yeah he's a yeah he's the calculator <laughs> call him the calculator you know he's the calculator so i just talked to him some more uh develop a game plan try to remember uh what some of these guys have out there mm -hmm. and try to remember the thunderous snake shots coming smashing down on you and you know so let's talk about the younger generation here now ah. there's also happens to be in the neighborhood we have a gentleman by the name of sam dijon yes i heard somebody call him slamming sammy slamming sammy he is now an expert at the age of what 11. Oh. Uh, and the, the strong possibility is for 2020 he may become a pro because of his points yeah uh, now, has that ever happened to a 12 year old? I don't know. I probably not. Okay. You know, like you, you yeah, I mean, I don't know what Tony was doing at the time at, mm. at 12. I mean, these guys did start young, Yeah. but that is the track to, you know, starting that young and being part of that, the ultimate, the being elite. part of the, the, the elite group, the, yeah. the upper echelon of foosball. That's the track. That's the kind of commitment, dedication to actually get up in there. You, you know, you're building your muscles at a, at a, at an early age, yeah. um, but also to just, you know, making good choices, mm -hmm. um, playing the game right, being patient, you know, and 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 not burning out. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, don't that could happen. That could happen. Yeah. You know, don't burn out on it. And and you know, if you need to take a little time, take a little time. It's not the end of the world. Correct. You know, it's not all or nothing. You know, and especially for as young as as Sam is, like you know, there's there's you know, education, college, things to consider. Oh sure. You know Life. what I mean? Yeah. Life. Life's gonna happen. Yeah. And uh, we you know, we fingers crossed because we you know we love Sam. Yeah. He's, he's great. He's a lot of fun to play with and. His mental game is really progressing now. Yeah. He's really starting to develop. Uh, and when you come back in the fold, I think you understand what I mean because he's now waiting. He's now looking. Yeah. Uh, he's not just going uh, the way, you know, when you're first developing. Right. Uh, and I, I think he's more than earned his expert status. I can't, I cannot wait to, to, to play him because I was just, I literally was just talking to Walker the other day about him and Walker's mm -hmm. like, yo, he's, He's like beating me. He's like beating people. Yes. It's, it, he's like, it's it's pretty insane. And I'm like, what? I yeah. gotta get in there. I just played him uh, this past Friday evening in the finals of our of our uh, DYP. Ooh. And yeah, uh, we went four four each in both uh, both games. But yeah, he took us in two he, games. He came out. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, he got us. I can't wait. And his dad was sitting in the goal. No kidding. Yeah. Awesome. So, I love it. But. I it's, love it. It's the name Dijon. I don't know. Something yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sam's, Sam's, Sam's going to do it. I mean, yeah. You know, he's just, he's going to do it. There's no it, doubt. It, it, it really, what it comes down to is the fact that he is so, so maturing so quickly. Yeah. His mental game. Yeah. It's really making the difference. Yeah. So what's the future for, for our youth? What do you think about foosball in general? Do you think foosball is going to grow? Is it going to shrink? What's, what's, oh what's man, we were just talking about this. It's, there's a lot of things that need to come into place. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I like, I like, you know, I like some of the league ideas. I think, um, some sponsorships need to happen, mm -hmm. you know, things like this. Um, I kind of hit a wall in my game. You know, uh, I, I hit a I hit a point where, um, you know, we were talking about this earlier, where 
uh, I wasn't paying attention to to some of the things in my life, I, I, high anxiety, things that sure. just needed to be managed, you know, mm -hmm. in my life. And, and I was spending a lot of time at Foods. You're a business person. You own a business. Right. That's a lot of time. A lot of time, you know, a lot of pressure coming down. And, and I wasn't, de you know, things were unbalanced, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of. Uh, coming home at night after work and and trying to stroke pull shots and like work on a game and like doing this and and then uh, taking five days to go to tournaments going to Colorado going wherever to play and um, things felt unbalanced in my life but you know the thing is is you're going out to these tournaments and and the you know the reward it should be playing it should be fun yep uh, getting your competitive game on um, but financially, you're not going to come back with it. You know, you're right. not going to come back with it. And, right. and I think that may hurt a lot of people. Um, and, 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 you know, maybe there's room to adjust that. I don't know. But like, uh, when you're going out for these things, you might as well plan on it being like a, like a little mini vacation and you're yeah. going to, going to yeah. spend some money and trying to get your competitive well, you no know, game going. I think with it, especially in the lower levels of, 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 uh, of, of skill. Mm -hmm. So beginner, amateur, uh, rookie, this kind of thing. Those kind of people, of course, uh, they do. They have to spend a lot of money to fly and to, to be housed and to eat and, of course, to pay for their fees and yeah. the tournaments. Yeah. Uh, perhaps there's some way we can uh, ultimately, with sponsorships and other things that may come along in the future, maybe defray some of those costs. But, I know. You know. We'll see. Yeah, it would it would be it would be nice to to see that um, more more promotion, more more mm -hmm. advertising, more showing uh, the the showing the world that like this is like just such a serious sport. It takes it takes your body and mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some, That's, some people might not realize that body, mind and bank account. Yeah. Body, <laughs> mind, and bank account. No doubt. You know, it takes all that to, 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 to get after it. You know, you know we haven't had a chance to formally thank you uh, on the air for sponsoring foosball radio for yeah. this last year. Awesome. Uh, thank you for believing in us. Yeah, um, of course. And uh, we are looking forward to the future as well and maintaining this relationship we've got. Uh, it's, it's, you give us so much credibility yeah. in being involved. That's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. I mean, foosball is, foosball is an amazing sport. I mean, look at what we just talked about. We talked about, you know, family environment, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about good competition, oh, you know what I mean? Teamwork. You talk about, you know, your body and your, your body needing to be healthy, mm -hmm. your mind and your mind needing to be healthy. You need to apply all of these things to a tournament in order to come out. Oh yeah. You know, so like, it's just, it's an amazing sport. You know, you got You got to get into it. Um, and you got to really fight to, to get out there, um, and, and get some points like Sammy's doing. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of work, but, uh, that's, that's what people get hooked on. So, you know? so, uh, what would you like to hear from foosball radio in the near future? Man, you know, I think, I think, it would be awesome to get Johnny Horton on here. I yeah. think I think we got to get Johnny. We've heard that a couple of times now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be good to get Johnny on here and hear some of his perspectives. Um, you know, uh, Atkinson, Tommy, Tommy Atkinson. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I it was one of the first real blowout matches I ever watched. The first worlds I ever went to was actually Walker and At Atkinson playing each other. Okay. In the middle of the room. Wow. Um, and it, we were just talking about this the other day. It, it just, it was absolutely incredible to singles see those match. singles match. Yeah. To see those two playing singles and see Tommy get fired up and, and yelling, bah, you know, like. Right. Kevin doesn't do that. No, Kevin, very quiet, very <laughs> quiet. You know what I mean? Just calm. But, but Tommy, uh, you know, has just got this, he's ferocious, you know, mm -hmm. it's, wow. mm -hmm. and so it'd be cool to, cool to hear okay. you know, a guy like that talk. I'm taking notes here, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. These are just like, this is my personal, like, yeah. little dream team list. You want to hear your playlist. Right, right. right? Yeah. You want to hear the playlist. Absolutely. Yeah, Tommy. Well, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you, too, because we're, we're in the neighborhood, uh, you know, you want to join us for Foosball Radio whenever you feel like it. You're, the door's open. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. We'd love, love to have you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I, I got some ideas. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Awesome. So we'll, we'll have a conversation to say the least. Nice. That's great. So Jesse Brust of 518 Prince, tell us. 
how exactly do we get a hold of you if we want to have, let's say, some foosball t-shirts or whatever kind of apparel made? Absolutely by email. Email holds me accountable. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a text message, uh, text messages are just, they're, they're like flowing in and out all day. And people are like, well, I texted you, I called you. And it's just like, no, nah, that ain't That's working. That's not functioning. That ain't working. No. Yeah. Uh, Jesse at 518prince.com. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Jesse at 518prince.com. We got it. Yep. That's, okay. that's the way. And uh, yeah, so so here's to the future, 2020 and 2021, when you come back into the to the game. Yeah, sport. yeah, McMillan, Gummison. That's that's that's. <laughs> You're gunning. For we're them. gunning for those two, even though they're the greatest. They are the greatest people. I'm not gunning for their personalities. I'm just gunning for that game. I want that game back. <laughs> so right here on Foosball Radio, the gauntlet has been tossed That's on, it. onto the table. I told Kevin I was going to do this. Did you? <laughs> yes. Nice. Okay. Well, we'll see. Pre-planning that all these comes. Yeah. We like to plan a year out in advance. We're, we're, we're called the Alpine Zone, by the way. That's our team name. Okay. I hear I hear Jeff Scarcilli's been stepping in, trying to fill my shoes. That's all right. <laughs> he can do that all he wants. Gee, it's all in good fun, dude. <laughs> but no, Jesse, thank you so much for, for joining us. Awesome. Today. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate and, it. And again, thanks for your support with Foosball Radio. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Our sincere thanks to Jesse Brust of 518 Prince. Don't forget to look up Jesse Brust and his team at 518prince.com. And now, some holiday messages from the team. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Clay Toomey, here to wish you a happy holiday. 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 This is why they don't let me on the show. I can't talk. Most of the time, my words come out in the form of a crossword puzzle, and I just don't know what the hell is going on. So whatever. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Boxing Day. Happy Festivus for the rest of us, whatever you celebrate. Happy New Year, heading into 2021. As we leave 2020, please, for the love of God, somebody shut the door and lock it. I love you. Bye. Hey, everyone. Mark Torres here, wishing you the best holiday season, Christmas, New Year, get belligerent, festival. That's dumb. That sounds horrible. Can I start over? <laughs> I'm so good at this. Cut. No, you Cut. can't. That was perfect. That's that was the perfect, perfect ending, too. You got to use great, the end of it, great. too. You got to use all of it. <laughs> hey, you know what's so cool? You know, looking back on the year and the body of work in its entirety, the people we've had on, the discussions oh, we've had, man. all the different top fives, the, the way we've educated the public, I think, on, on the sports history, or at least kind of kept that that stuff alive. We, we, we all got to feel really proud. And, you know, all four of us, you know, we got to feel proud of what we've done this year. I know I speak for everyone here on the Foos Talk Live team when I say we are so grateful to you for listening live and downloading the Foos Talk Live podcast. 2020 indeed was a tough year, but we know 2021 has more groundbreaking events for professional foosball. I'm Tom Robinson. From our team to yours, we hope you have a safe and happy new year. Without question, we will all play foosball again. When that time comes, we'll see you on the table. Now, stick around for another added glimpse behind the fourth wall with Tom Your Sr. Foos Talk Live is a product of Foosball Radio and Inside Foos TV. All rights reserved. Our sincere thanks to 518 Prince, Foosball Clubs USA, Foosballers The Movie, Foos by Tony and Foos by Brandon, and the United States Table Soccer Organization. Join us next Sunday for another episode of Foos Talk Live. In the meantime, we'll see you Foosin. We're out. I love my little girl. I like that. That is so good, man. I'm at the end. That is so good. Uh, it just warms my heart when I hear that. Damn, we could have gone for three hours tonight, right? What's the, yeah. what's the is, is the two hour it's, thing a preference or is that an actual limit? It's an actual limit they put on this this podcast, which I think is, you know, it's kind of strange. Um, especially live, but yeah. the, it, right in the uh, the old bylaws here. So if it goes to two hours and one minute, what happens to the extra minute? I don't know. I have no idea. You know, I mean, I, I there we we went over like thirty seconds that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tom, Tom would have gone for another hour or two. We, we, yeah, he, he, yeah. he was fired up. He he was into it. He's still there. Yeah, he's Tom, still there. He yeah. he might not know he's connected still. 
He's in the toilet. He just took. You could hear him flushing the toilet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all had. What? The you guys didn't hear me. Tom. What the fuck? You can hear me. I didn't hear you. Here's the worst thing. Here's the worst thing. You took. You took a piss sitting down. Tom, you sat down and took a piss. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Tom, you were peas sitting no. down. <laughs> I had to. I forgot to mute. And I had to go, dude. I was. Uh, you didn't even ask me my IPA, man. I'm with the Lagunitas tonight. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, I meant to mention God. that, too. It was on my notes. Oh, my it was God. on my notes. He's always, <laughs> always something. Single time. Like, dude, I had to go. <laughs> It's hilarious, dude. I, I snuck, hey, I snuck out right in the middle. Good idea to go We're ahead and end, about end the podcast now. Now that we've <laughs> <laughs> That should be the official end of the program. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as it's done, you just, see if we're, 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 I'm with that.